In part two of the voltage control oscillator audio application series, we'll go over frequency modulation. This will allow us to expand the amount of tones we can generate and further enhance this VCO. This circuit configuration is almost identical to the one used in part one. The main difference is in the trim resistor terminal. There are two main connections that lead up to the trim resistor pin. One is a series static and variable resistor, and the other is a resistor and a voltage source. We'll see how the voltage source can allow us to change the output frequency depending on its amplitude. In other words, frequency modulation. Let's take a look at the message and output signal on the oscilloscope. The message signal is the yellow square wave. The message is generated from the voltage source. The output is the red triangle wave, which is the frequency modulated carry frequency. This is generated internally in the VCO. We'll take a closer look at these waveforms, and then look at a few equations to explain the instantaneous frequency of the output. Here's a closer look at the message in the output signal. The message, which is a square wave, alternates between a minimum and a maximum value. The purple cursors are measuring the output frequency, which is approximately 1.12 kHz. We see for the minimum value, this output frequency is constant. Now, when the message signal goes from low to high, we see that there is a change in output frequency. The frequency decreases as the signal goes high. The resulting output frequency now, when the message signal is high, is about 606 Hz. And this value is stable across that maximum. This is the basic idea of frequency modulation. Control the output frequency by the amplitude of the message signal. One thing to note is the slope of the output signal when the message is high and when the message is low. Taking a look at the two slopes when the signal goes from high to low, we can see the difference. The square wave goes from a high to a low value, but you can use a message signal that varies more subtly. For example, a sine wave. We'll start from the minimum amplitude of the sine wave and then move across the periodic wave. We see as the sine wave's amplitude increases, the frequency out, the red triangle wave, decreases. As the sine wave decreases in amplitude, we return to the same value that we started with at the minimum. Let's take a look at the frequency modulation theory to get a better idea of what's going on. We'll take a look at the angular frequency equations, specifically the instantaneous angular frequency, which is our first equation. It states that omega i, or the instantaneous angular frequency, equals omega c, which is the angular frequency carry, plus the voltage to frequency conversion gain of the VCO times mt, the message signal. In terms of the waveforms we viewed previously, the output, the red triangle wave, was the instantaneous angular frequency in this equation. Omega c, or the angular frequency carry, is easy to understand if for a moment we assume that the message signal is zero. If the message signal is zero, then we have zero times the voltage to frequency conversion k. In this instance, the instantaneous angular frequency, or output frequency, is equal to the angular frequency carry, omega c. This case explains what we went over in part one, where the output frequency is dependent on the resistor and the capacitor value. If the message signal MT's amplitude is either greater or less than zero, then we get a change from the angular frequency carry, omega c. This results in a change in the instantaneous output frequency. This is how we control the output frequency from the amplitude of the message signal. Note that mt is a function of time. This message signal needs to be a periodic waveform, but can take the form of a sine wave, square wave, or anything that's periodic. In terms of understanding frequency modulation, the voltage to frequency conversion, the constant k in this equation, 
is not critical for understanding. The value is noted on the VCO's datasheet, but put simply, it determines how sensitive the frequency output is changed per a change in voltage. For the VCO used in this video, K is negative. That's why for an increasing voltage, you get a decreasing frequency. You'll typically see these angular frequency equations written in terms of frequency. The angular frequency equals 2 pi times the frequency. I'll include the frequency equations in 2a and 2b. <laughs> to wrap the VCO Audio Applications Part 2 video up, I'll leave you with an example of how you can calculate the instantaneous minimum and maximum frequencies for a given waveform. I'd recommend finding the minimum and maximum frequency swing by using a message signal of a square wave. You will essentially have two frequencies that you'll be outputting, one for the minimum and one for the maximum. What's interesting about this is it doesn't matter what wave shape you're modulating. It will alternate between these two minimum and maximum frequencies as long as that waveform is periodic. If your carry frequency waveform is a sawtooth, stair step, or any kind of arbitrary periodic signal, it will alternate between these minimum and maximum frequencies because the message is a square wave. Once you can calculate the minimum and maximum frequency range, you can dial in specific frequencies for a given amplitude because there is a linear relationship between these minimum and maximum points. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more follow-up videos of how we can add additional control and how we can analyze certain sounds and reproduce them.